Hello, fit and healthy friends. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Holly of Renewal Fitness and Nutrition Coaching. And this past weekend, I ran a half marathon. Leading up until this, over the past few months, I've been sharing different videos on my YouTube channel about how I was training for the half marathon in order to share some training tips and specifically nutrition tips with all of you to hopefully help you improve your nutrition strategy and training to improve your running. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you most specifically what I did leading up to and on race day for my nutrition, how it went and how well it worked to reduce GI symptoms that I commonly deal with. Hopefully this will help some of you as well to improve your nutrition strategy and reduce GI symptoms. If you're new here, I'm a registered dietitian as well as a certified holistic nutritionist, and I'm currently in a master's program in nutritional science where I'm focusing my final project on something special that I am creating for runners to help reduce GI symptoms. So I will have future videos sharing a lot more about that. But the three days leading up to my event, I started to implement some of these strategies to reduce GI symptoms that could occur on race day by reducing certain foods. Two days prior to the race, I started carb loading. I came up with a plan. I calculated out how many carbohydrates I should be eating because at my race pace, I would be going above and beyond 90 minutes of exercise. Typically, if you're doing something more like a 5K or a 10K or even a sprint triathlon, you probably don't really need to worry about carb loading so much. It really has the most performance benefits over and above 90 minutes. So similarly, if you have an endurance race coming up, you typically want to start carbohydrate loading anywhere from one to three days, but usually about two days prior to that. This will be a big amount of carbohydrates far beyond what you typically eat and probably what is even very comfortable to eat. But as you're reducing exercise and increasing your carbohydrate intake, this will allow you to completely top up the glycogen stores in your body so that you'll have lots of energy available to you on race day. Now, during this carb loading phase, what I did was make sure that I was consuming more carbohydrate and a little bit less protein and fat than normal and reducing fiber. Fiber can cause issues for a lot of people, so typically you wanna cut down on that. So I focus primarily on very simple carbohydrates like white rice, oats, potatoes, pasta. Usually this is the time where you don't wanna worry so much about healthy food. This is the time to eat very simple carbs. Refined carbs are perfectly fine at this time. You wanna get as much sugar and carbohydrates into your system as possible. The day before the race, was a little bit trickier and typically it will be if you have to travel. So I was staying overnight the day before the race. And when you do this, you really have to plan ahead by taking some food with you, maybe looking up restaurants in the area and figuring out what you're going to eat ahead of time that is going to settle well in your stomach. So what I did was the morning of, I had my pretty normal protein smoothie in the morning that I have almost every day that has oatmeal and some fruit. And for lunch, we looked for a gluten-free place because I cannot tolerate gluten. Plenty of people can, and you don't have to go gluten-free. But luckily in Ventura, it's an amazing city for people who have food allergies or have gluten sensitivities. We found a place that was entirely gluten-free aside from maybe a few dishes. And I got a big Belgian waffle there with fruit and maple syrup. And then I had a protein shake from Orgain to give me a little bit extra protein, carbohydrates, and a little bit of fat. Throughout the day, I snacked on some different carbohydrate foods that are very palatable and easy for me to eat. Then for dinner, my husband and I found a Greek restaurant, which is always one of our favorites because they offer some pretty healthy options. And I had plain white rice and grilled chicken that pretty much just had pepper and salt on there. So it was a very plain, bland dinner, just a bunch of rice and a little bit of chicken. So in many races prior to this, I have planned my food and gels and liquid carbohydrates and all of those things based on what I should be taking in and not as much on how I feel because I want to make sure I get adequate nutrition. And then sometimes I'm sort of over consuming in a way that's not very comfortable and that has led to abdominal cramps and pain that have actually stopped me in a race before. So I wanted to make sure to avoid that this time. When I woke up on race day at 4 a.m., two and a half hours prior to the race, it would have been best to drink about 12 to 24 ounces of water plus about 106 carbohydrates approximately, which is based on my body weight. But that for me is a huge amount of food on race day. 
typically I'm very nervous. I can't eat a lot. And a lot of times I sort of just force that in because I'm thinking I need carbohydrates and then I end up with an upset stomach. This time around, I decided to just listen to my body. I decided I would eat whatever felt good and comfortable. And if I couldn't eat much, then I would just have a gel right before the race. What I ended up doing was pretty much what I've showed in all of my previous videos. So I ate a Bobo's PB&J little cookie type of thing throughout the morning. I took little bites as my stomach allowed, as my nerves allowed. I had approximately half a cup of lucid coffee with oat milk. I did this to just get a little bit of caffeine and a little bit of extra carbohydrates without too much because typically I want to get in caffeine so that it helps me to race well but I end up drinking too much coffee and then my stomach is really full of water. So this time I decided not to worry so much about caffeine because also caffeine can be a GI irritant when you're racing. So I think I only had about maybe 40 carbohydrates the morning of the race, but my stomach felt good and to me that is what is most important. So this may be something to consider for yourself. You probably wanna find out what the standards are for what you should be eating. And I posted some of this in a previous video which I will link in the description below. But then you also need to tailor it to you. And really experience is the only way to do this, is just trial and error, trying different things to see what suits you best. In my race bottle, I did exactly as I had planned. As in my other videos, I had about 14 ounces of water, a little bit of branched chain amino acids, and a little bit of caffeinated electrolytes. So I decided to put more of my caffeine into that bottle and into the chews that I was having during the race rather than before the race. And then throughout the race, I just sipped on this to thirst. I didn't try to drink the entire bottle. I just drank as it felt comfortable. So at about 20 minutes into the race, I checked in with how am I feeling? Should I start taking a gel now to make sure I'm topped up and good for the rest of the race rather than wait for maybe 45 or 50 minutes in? At that point, I really didn't feel the need and I felt like my stomach wasn't quite settled yet. So I kept running. And then at 45 minutes, I took my You Can Gel that I had been practicing with. And it took me probably about 10 minutes to finish that. So I just consumed it very slowly, taking time, making sure my stomach was good. And then again, at around the 120, 125 mark, I checked in with myself, felt like I probably could take a little bit of food. So I had my Cliff Energy Blocks and I ate about two of those over the course of a couple of minutes. And this whole strategy worked amazingly i had no gi issues my stomach didn't feel super full of fluids i wasn't having any abdominal cramps or pain or bloating or anything like that i felt great stomach wise so i was happy to see that the way my nutrition strategy went throughout the entire race went super smoothly and i had no problems and also a final shout out to the ventura marathon this was a beautiful course i really enjoyed running it if you have an opportunity to go i thought it was a beautiful course very well done lots of spectators and cheering but also some kind of solitude moments where it's just the runners out in the middle of nature really nice race and it finishes right by the beach so i definitely recommend checking it out so i hope this video was helpful to you if it was please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't yet so you don't miss future videos and do keep an eye out because in coming months i will be posting some videos specifically for runners who have gi issues to help them to train and race better and much more comfortably and in the meantime, visit my website at renewalfitcoach.com where I have plenty of free resources and meal plans and different downloads, as well as products that I recommend not only for fitness, but for overall health and wellness. And if you're someone who could use a little bit of extra personalized guidance and support to help you figure out how to perform well, how to fuel well, and how to manage things like GI issues when you're running or racing, please reach out to me for a free consult. I would love to help you. You can reach out to me at renewalfitcoach at gmail.com to book a free consult. So thank you again for watching. And until the next video, blessings on your health, wellness, and endurance sports journeys.